About a month ago, I was a man that had never driven a Ferrari, and that's until viewer of the channel now, friend of the channel, Rowan from RC Classic Garage, offered me very kindly his Ferrari 360 Spider for me to review on the channel. And if you haven't watched that video, I encourage you to do so because it was a truly wholeheartedly emotional experience for me. Ever since I passed my driving test 10 years ago, I've been closely monitoring values of these older Ferraris, as I've noticed that the 360s and F430s have come down to probably the bottom of their depreciation curve. You can pick up either for under £60,000 now. And so I said in that 360 review that I would like to try out an F430 because from my head, in the realm of possibility where I might one day be able to own a Ferrari, looking at 360s and 430s being relatively at the same price point, I was thinking probably a 430 would be where I'd put my money. You've got the slightly newer technology, it's a slightly newer car, it's a bit faster, more refined, and all the rest of it. So I said I'd like to drive an F430, however today we're going to be skipping dinner and going straight to dessert, because those of you who know will have already noticed that this is not a Ferrari F430, this is a Ferrari 430 Scuderia. These Scuderias carry a premium over the standard F430s, but also the 360s like the one I drove, potentially three or even four fold. And so in today's video, I want to find out whether this is three or four times better than that 360. This isn't going to be a particularly technical review where I compare it to its rivals, because the truth is I just haven't driven them. What this is going to be though is a fairly unique take and perspective from someone with limited experience with these cars. What is it all about? What is there to this car and how does it make you feel as a driver? So come with me today as we go in depth on the 430 Scuderia and of course we'll take it out for a drive and hopefully we're going to be very, very impressed. Now this particular example has been lent to me today by my friend at Connect Limos. If you're a groom or groom to be and you want to be taken to a wedding in something extra special, then these are the guys to contact. There is this exact Ferrari 430 Scuderia that could take you along to your wedding day, as well as an array of other really impressive vehicles such as Rolls Royces. But as you'll be able to see if you have eyes, this particular 430 Scuderia is in a very striking yellow. And the 430 Scuderia in the UK at least was already a pretty rare car. These came out during the time of the financial crisis. And so there weren't that many people or not as many people as usual that wanted to drop near enough 200K on a compromising supercar. So numbers of these cars in the UK are certainly in the hundreds and ones of which that are yellow, well, it's probably less than the amount of fingers I have on one of my hands. So this is a very rare car indeed, and it does look particularly striking with that gorgeous stripe over the top. So let me just give you a very basic overview of the 430 Scuderia before we step inside then. Obviously, this was the lightweight variant of the Ferrari F430, which wasn't exactly the heaviest of things ever, but they managed to get this thing down to 1,350 kilograms, which by today's standards just sounds like, well, a motorbike. It's so, so light, and it's not exactly the smallest car. It was incredible 15 years ago what manufacturers were able to leave out of cars, which unfortunately they're not able to do today. So yes, 1,350 kilos supposedly or thereabouts. It does share the same 4.3 litre V8 engine that the standard F430 have. However, they reworked the pistons on this. They also gave it a carbon fiber intake system amongst a few other bits and bobs, but ultimately it gives it about 20 horsepower extra over the standard car. So it brings it up to over 500, 503 to be exact. Also, F1 transmission in this exclusively. You could get a manual in the F430, but not in the Scuderia. However, this is a reworked F1 transmission, whereas in the F430, the quickest paddle shift available was about 150 milliseconds. This, in certain criteria, in race mode, full on throttle over 5,000 RPM, I believe, is capable of shifting at 60 milliseconds. Very, very fast indeed. Almost three times quicker than the standard one my maths is right, two and a half times quicker. In fact, this was closer in terms of difference to the paddle shift of an F1 car at the time than it was to the original F430. So very, very impressive stuff. It'll be interesting to see how this holds up today in 2024, but also compared to the Ferrari 360 that I drove previously, because that was an F1 car. Other than that, I mean, look at it. It's just 
amazing and I am truly pinching myself as I stand here delivering this piece to camera to you. I might be trying to look or maybe if I'm lucky looking professional to you guys on camera but really I'm just tingling with excitement and disbelief that I've been given this opportunity. So let's jump inside the car. I'm gonna show you some things in there that you may have never seen about a 430 Scuderia. Most reviewers will probably just get straight onto the road part and tell you how it drives and all the suspension feels different slightly to the Ferrari 599 GTB. And the thing is, I've never driven any of those cars. Many of you watching have probably never even driven something like this. So I'm gonna give it to you in layman's terms. Okay, so happily this static interior segment won't take very long because with this being the lightweight variant of the 430 well there's nothing in here it's very very bare bones but not quite as bare bones as you might expect the first thing you notice upon stepping into this car is well quite frankly how far it is you have to step down into the car you sit very very low and the car is pretty low itself but it's the fact that the seats are literally on the floor and speaking of the floor there's nothing in the way of carpets here. You can see all the welds. We've got a metal floor over here, a metal floor over here, and you can see essentially all of the bits that join this car together. And then looking up the floor, you first notice lots of carbon fiber. There's a lovely plaque there signifying Ferrari's 2007 F1 Constructors Championship win. Then Alcantara with beautiful yellow stitching all along to match the exterior. Got that embroidered on the seats as well. More carbon fiber more carbon fiber and a lot more carbon fiber in the way of these door cards without sounding like too much of a cliche it does really feel like you've stepped into a race car the seats themselves as you might expect don't have all that much in the way of adjustment we can adjust our rake in terms of our backrest back and forward manually we can also slide the seat backwards and forward manually. The steering wheel is also manually adjustable. You can move it up and down, backwards and forwards, pretty standard stuff. But very quickly, I found a seating position that very much works for me. And the seats in terms of comfort levels are fairly comfortable. Of course, I've driven the car a little bit just to get to this filming location, and I've not had any issues at all. They're just, they're really good seats. So that perfect amount of supportive, but also there's enough comfort there. Of course, it's not quite as comfortable as that 360 that I drove or something like a Jaguar F-Type that I've had on the channel more recently. Of course not, but they are pretty good and not as firm as one might expect. This car doesn't have harnesses. It's got conventional seat belts, which is probably a good thing. As much as I would like some harnesses for like one day of driving this car and filming, the owner, Julie, informs me that if you do have the harnesses spec, you didn't have a conventional seat belt as well so it was one or the other and actually probably nine times out of ten you're just going to want a conventional seat belt or at least your passenger might do you're not going to want to wear those harnesses every time you drive the car as much as i think it would add to the drama just a little bit despite what is a big iceberg of carbon on the door here there is actually quite usable storage in here large pockets down below and also a fabric extendable pocket above here which i've got my wallet my inhaler the keys from my kn and a few other things in there so actually you can put a fair few bits in the door in the middle there's nothing you've got a beautiful carbon fiber transmission tunnel which we'll go through a little bit in a second and this flat area here there's no cup holders or anything like that although the owner did actually make he engineered and made his own makeshift cup holders which fit on this central tunnel here and uh, it's very impressive indeed there's no glove box but there is a small net where you can struggle to fit maybe a credit card or two in there and behind the seats actually quite a good bit of storage certainly if you have the passenger seat forwards you could get a small soft bag behind there's another net and then it's the same on my side but also there's another storage unit here which actually houses some ear defenders which uh, as you'll see a little bit later on is not exactly a bad idea then we have the only speakers that are in this car and actually i will just say people moan about the ferrari stereo certainly today but also of the past and so i was expecting when i put the radio on for it to be really 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 bad but actually, although we've just got speakers here, it sounds pretty good. It's just not very balanced because there's no tweeters or speakers in the doors or anything like that. So the sound is very much coming from behind you, but the actual quality and how noisy it goes, it's fine. I was listening to the radio, no problems on the way down here. So let's just switch everything on then. Firstly, so I can get a little bit of air conditioning going in here. So conventional key, very, very lovely, simple design here. Pop that into the ignition barrel. 
let everything switch on, fuel pump all prime, we'll get a nice happy check okay light coming up. Then I'll put my foot on the brake, hold this engine start button for a couple of seconds. And the 430 Scuderia rear fires into life. So in front of you, of course, the centerpiece is the gorgeous yellow rev counter. We've got a gear display in the top there, showing that we're currently in neutral. And down below, a very, very limited display, which shows the status of our doors, what we have selected on the Manatino switch. But we can also use this mode button here to scroll through and see the time and the temperature. And yes, 30 Celsius today. On the right hand side then, a lovely, very nostalgic for me speedometer, 220 miles an hour or 360 kilometers indicated upon there. And the mileage on this car, which is just a smidgen over 18,400 miles, which doesn't sound like an awful lot, but actually for a 430 Scud, it is quite a good amount of mileage. The owner of this car, he's had it a very long time. He's done lots of those miles and he's actually taken this car to Sweden before on a road trip. So this thing happily is very much used. Below that, we've got the janky Ferrari fuel gauge, which actually is, is so funny because when I got here and switched the car off, it was showing about three quarters of a tank. Now it's showing a full tank. So essentially drive the car, fill it up. Don't trust that too much. To the left-hand side, three lovely analog dials one showing our water temperature, one showing our oil temperature in Celsius this time, and an oil pressure gauge too. On the right hand side, got the controls for our boot release, which is at the front. Quite a good amount of storage in here. Again, you're really not gonna to struggle to take this thing on a weekend away, because you have got room for soft bags behind. Certainly in my driving position, I would fit one, and the passenger comes forward a little bit, you could get another in there. And then in the front, all of my camera stuff has fit in there, no problem. I would argue you could probably get a cabin size suitcase in there as well as a large soft bag. So it is very, very impressive storage for what is essentially a lightweight road going race car. And then we have proper stalks. This 430 generation car was the last of which that had stalks before the 458 came out and the indicators moved onto the steering wheel amongst other things. So we still have proper stalks for our indicators and our lights and likewise for our windscreen wipers, which makes it slightly more approachable and intuitive for someone like me that has very limited experience behind the wheel of a Ferrari. And the Manatino, which wasn't around for long at the point of this car's release. In fact, the Scuderia was the first of the lightweight supercars from Ferrari that had the Manatino, uh, on which we have a rainy, slippery mode, sport and race. Then we have CT and CST, which as you can hear from the beep, when I put it into CST off, it's a warning because that means everything is off. We're not gonna be doing that today. We're gonna to be leaving it in race, as I'm told is the best way to drive it. And of course, then on the top of this carbon fiber wheel, we have those shift lights, which come alive at around 6,000 RPM before flashing red all the way at the red line at just over eight and a half thousand rpm very quickly down here then we've got the electric window buttons the same as a 360 you can't quite reach as the driver both of them at the same time you're going to do one at a time quite a funky design that and then we've got this central radio system which as i said i was pleasantly surprised you hit radio you choose your station you turn up the volume and it works very well actually i enjoyed the radio driving along here but we do also have navi and we have a navigation so you can enter address let's just put goodwood in and click ok and this thing will literally give you such a basic route guidance it's so so funny look at that and here we have our controls for the transmission so reverse using expect if you press that it puts the car into reverse auto which basically is putting the car into drive and you press it again to lock the car into manual or you just pull a paddle and the launch control button which as you can imagine activates launch control then unlike newer models the bumpy road button is actually down here not on the wheel so the essence of this is essentially soft suspension mode which you can have in any of the settings on the manatino which is really really key and electric mirror adjustment controls and of course a manual handbrake there's a couple of other tiny little storage compartments, which as you can see are probably more designed for Blackberries or Nokias that would have been more common at the time. They certainly don't fit a modern day iPhone. Uh, but that is basically it in essence inside here. Of course, the only other thing to talk about, which is pretty much inside here, is that glorious 4.3 litre engine and the beautiful carbon fibre surround in the engine bay, which I can see oh so well 
through my rear view mirror. So without further ado then, let's get in this scooter here, let's get bolted up and let's go for a drive. So here we are then driving the Ferrari 430 Scuderia. I still can't quite believe I'm saying that. I'm straight into manual on the gearing because, well, one, I want to use these extremely enticing carbon fiber paddles, but also these F1 transmissions don't do too well as an auto. They tend to eat the clutch slightly more than if you change gear yourself. This thing feels really special. Straight away, I have to say, this feels familiar compared to the Ferrari 360. Essentially, everything is laid out in the same way from the car itself with the engine being right there, but also where everything is in terms of controls and the dials and where you want to look for various things. There's lots of similarities, but also at the same time, this 430 Scuderia feels much more raw, slightly more raucous, you can hear everything going on with the lack of sound deadling in here, and it does feel ever so special. We're angled slightly down looking at the road, so I've got such a fantastic view of what's in front of me. I also love these long carbon fiber wing mirrors with the view of the wide hips of this Ferrari. They feel playful and exciting. I touched on it earlier, but the seating position is sublime. The wheel's in exactly the right place for me. I can get a lovely grip on it, it's a really good size. And just cruising along here on the A3, yeah, it's noisy, but it's fairly sedate. The steering isn't darty or overly responsive. And right now we are in the softest of settings, which is wet. However, as has become quite common in my reviews of late, oh look, there's the Hindhead Tunnel. Let's stick the car into race. That's gonna sharpen things up for me a little bit. We're gonna go down to first gear here. You ready? Oh, there's the valves. Wow. The valves open at just over six and a half thousand RPM. And the upshifts at the red line when you're on the power are very fast but extremely brutal. You get a real kick in your back. It's slightly like having an overly aggressive masseuse giving you a full body. It's kind of a nice sensation but at the same time you think, oh, may not be a little bit more gentle. Honestly, the tone of this V8 under that 6,000 RPM mark is fairly mellow. It's not particularly high pitched, but when you do get it up into those higher revs, listen. That seven to eight and a half thousand RPM pitch is just perfect, high, exciting, exhilarating. And that would never get boring. Unlike the Ferrari 360 that I drove prior to this, this car feels, feels more expensive. It feels more delicate and fragile. I think part of that is because of the lightweight stripped back nature of this Ferrari, we don't have things like sound insulation. You're very aware of every little bump in the road because you can hear it, but not only that, you can sense it. Even in bumpy road mode from what I've heard, which is quite compliant in cars like the 458 and models thereafter, even in bumpy road mode here in this 430 Scud, you can still feel the rigidity of this car setup. In terms of the gearbox then, well, as we just found out in the tunnel, at those higher RPMs, the shifts are quite fast, but only if you're foot down on the throttle. I have to admit, just this general cruising sort of half-hearted driving. It's been about a month since I drove the 360, but this F1 gearbox doesn't feel massively different to that 360 transmission. 
having the Manatino down here in race affords me a real sharpness on the throttle response. Actually, the throttle on this car, the travel of it is extremely long. So you're not really accidentally giving yourself a kick in the back all the time because you can really progressively go through it and get a good feel for that engine. I mean, it sounds funny, but this really does feel like I'm directly connected to that big V8 block behind me. It just synergizes so nicely. But really, this Scuderia, I can tell it's all about that 6,000 RPM and above. The valves open at 6,000 RPM and above. These transmission red flashing lights on the wheel come to life at 6,000 RPM and above. And this F1 transmission also comes alive at 6,000 RPM and above when your foot is down to the floor. Hopefully what we're gonna be able to do in a moment is get a nice empty stretch on one of my favorite roads and see what this thing can do on the twisties when we start pushing on a little bit, because that is what the 430 Scuderia is all about in essence. It's the track car. It's meant to take corners extremely well. And I know that on these Michelin Cup 2 tires on a plus 30 Celsius day like today, this thing is gonna handle and grip dramatically. So let's try and experience this Scuderia on some twisty stuff. I just love it when those valves open. And yeah, once you start to get some turning lock on, you feel a fizzing, a sort of vibration through the steering. It makes the car come alive. Overtaking like that is never a problem. There's absolutely plenty of power. I mean, over 500 horsepower in something that weighs well under one and a half tons. With a soundtrack like that, is more than you'll ever need. but it's not over sensitive. The Ferrari 360, when you sort of got into it on a corner a little bit, started putting a bit of angle on, you sort of started to feel like you were losing a sensation of where the rear of the car was. Whereas this does feel much more dialed in, much more grounded and, and tight. It's actually a really, really lovely steering feel on this. It just, as I say, starts to fizz and sort of bars with life when you start to push on. It just all sort of synergizes with the engine feel, the vibration from that, the steering, and then the sound all comes together to create this encapsulation of exhilaration. And this is my favorite part of any review. It's my favorite little stretch of road. It's a miniature little hill climb. Normally not go very far before we catch up to the back of someone, but let's just see how it does up here. shifts at the top are brutal and the downshifts instantaneous and that grip endless the Scuderia I should also mention got as if they weren't big enough even bigger diameter carbon ceramics I think they went up by another 20 mil to something I think in the region of 40 centimeters these carbon ceramics are in diameter and so you're never going to struggle on the road with stopping power whatsoever but the whole package is is reassuring that that handling as i say is is more confidence inspiring than it was in the 360 it's it's tighter it's not loose in any way like that car was and you've got so much travel on that throttle pedal that you're able to just progressively 
building that power. Oh, and yeah, as I said earlier, this thing wants to be driven fast. It's only really when you fully start getting on it that it starts to make sense and does this to my face where I can't contain that childhood grin. But ultimately though, for me, is this three, four times better than that 360? It's an easy answer and the answer is no. But the main reason for that is that the Ferrari, for me, is all about the soul. It's all about the passion. And that 360 captured, I'd say, 90% of what this 430 does. That 360, okay, had an unfair advantage because it was a spider. So you got that extra stimulation from the elements, more sound from the exhaust that you were ever closer to and more exposed to. But essentially what I'm trying to say is that a Ferrari is a Ferrari in a lot of ways. But if I was to choose a car to drive down to a supercar Sunday meet at Goodwood, or take my favorite road like the one I've just driven on now, I'd choose the 430 Scuderia every time. In fact, this does make me even more intrigued to drive a stock 430, because I wonder how close it is to this in terms of the drive. Because if it is, within 70 or 80% of what this thing feels like to drive, then a 430 at 60 to 70 grand does seem like a fantastic place to put your spending money. But am I complaining? Not at all. <laughs> So if you are in the market for a Ferrari that's gonna make you grit your teeth every time you drive it and tense you up and send shivers down your spine, and you happen to have stumbled across this video with a couple of hundred grand to spend, well, from me at least, I can certainly recommend a 430 Scud. It does all of those things I just mentioned, and I certainly know if this was part of my driveway, I would never tire of opening it up jumping inside, starting that engine, and experiencing this masterpiece of a package. I mean, that's the thing. The engine in and of itself is brilliant, but not the best of any in the world. The gearbox has its quirks, but it has an attitude and a style that is quite unique and I've not really experienced before this. The car has bucket loads of grip, but it does it in a way that doesn't remove all the excitement. You can feel every last nook and cranny of the surface that you're driving over, and it makes the driving experience addictive. No two drives will ever be the same. The engine never responds exactly the same way. When you downshift, sometimes it cracks, sometimes it doesn't. The upshifts are never exactly the same. It keeps you on your toes, is what I'm trying to say, and it keeps you on the edge of your seat until you put your foot down, and then it pins you into the back of it. So I hope you've enjoyed this review of the 430 Skidder Rear. I want to say a huge thank you to David again at Connect Limos for giving me this opportunity to drive this car for the day. It's been wonderful. I can't thank you enough. Thank you all so much for watching. If you want to see more like this, do not forget to subscribe to the channel. Thank you all for watching, and I'll see you very, very soon.